Hello there, beautiful people of the internet. How are you doing today? My name is Jackie and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I want to do the first in a two-part series talking about the best and worst books that I read in school. Now, I know required reading is very controversial. There were several books that I was required to read in school that I actually really enjoyed and are some of my all-time favorites. However, there were some other books I read that I absolutely detested. So so today I want to talk about the best books that I read in high school and one that I actually read in middle school and if you tune into my channel next week I'll have another video talking about the worst books that I had to read in high school and again one from middle school. But today is going to be a very positive video talking about books that I really enjoyed, so let's get right into it. The first book that I want to talk about is actually not a book at all, it is technically a play. Now, in high school, I read three Shakespeare plays. Freshman year, I read Romeo and Juliet. Sophomore year, I read Othello. Junior year, we were supposed to read Hamlet, and then it ended up not happening. We didn't get to it, though I did later read Hamlet here at college. But my favorite Shakespeare play that I read in high school was the one I read senior year, and that was Macbeth. I think Macbeth is probably my favorite Shakespeare play out of all the ones that I've read so far, and I just really, really love the story of this play. It is up there with King Lear, I think, as my favorite Shakespeare plays. Macbeth is a Shakespearean tragedy that was written under the reign of King James I of England. It follows a Scottish nobleman named Macbeth who receives a prophecy from three witches that he will one day become King of Scotland and that no man of woman born can ever kill him. After this, Macbeth becomes overtaken by ambition and his ambitious wife encourages him to murder Duncan, the King of Scotland, and take his throne. However, after Macbeth becomes king, he is consumed by paranoia and guilt over this murder that he has committed. I think this is an absolutely phenomenal play. I absolutely love Lady Macbeth as a character. I mean, she's not a good person by any means, but I find her so incredibly interesting. I actually, in senior year English class, had to read the part of Lady Macbeth when we were reading the play. Well, the first day when we were casting roles, a lot of my class was absent because a lot of them had gone on a school club related field trip and there were so few people left in class that basically every single person in the class was going to have to volunteer for some role or other during the duration of the play and I figured you know if nobody wants to be Lady Macbeth and I have to be someone might as well be the female lead. <laughs> Another thing I particularly enjoyed about Macbeth was this theme of prophecy and how Macbeth's prophecy that he receives from the sisters at the beginning of the play ends up being resolved at the end. I also enjoyed the elements of prophecy in another play that I had to read in high school. This one was not by Shakespeare. It was Oedipus Rex or Oedipus the King by Sophocles, and we had to read its sequel, Antigone, as well. But I really enjoyed how in Oedipus, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, really. I think everyone knows what Oedipus is about. Everyone knows Freud's Oedipus complex. Basically, the king, whose name I can't remember right now, the king and his wife, Queen Jocasta, receive a prophecy that their son Oedipus will one day grow up to kill his father and marry his mother. So the king decides to send the child away. He ends up being raised in a different place. And when Oedipus receives the same prophecy from an oracle, he is horrified and he leaves his home because he believes the people who raised him are his father and mother. And he can't imagine ever killing his father and marrying his mother. But then because of their respective actions, when they receive this prophecy, it ends up coming true. And it's so tragic how everything ends up. Another book that I really enjoyed in high school, I also read senior year. I selected this as the book I read for a project. So my entire class did not have to read this, though a couple other people in the class selected the same book as me. And so we talked about it. This is The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. Sylvia Plath is generally 
formerly known as a poet and this is her only novel. I absolutely love some of her poetry that I had to read in school and I really enjoyed this novel as well. It is semi-autobiographical because Sylvia Plath did famously suffer from mental illness. The Bell Jar follows Esther Greenwood who is a young woman who's really struggling. She doesn't feel like she has a place in society because the culturally acceptable ideals of womanhood do not really fit her. She is someone who is at the end of her academic career trying to start as a journalist or writer and she really doesn't know what to do. Her whole life has been based on doing well academically and now she doesn't know what to do with her career because she doesn't want to just be a mother but also the typically feminine careers do not appeal to her and she has a lot of mental struggles with depression, mental illness, and suicide suicidal thoughts. And seeing her journey through this book is really heartbreaking in how lost she feels. The bell jar is used as a metaphor for how trapped she feels by her mental illness. And to see the way that mental illness was treated back in this time, this was published in the 60s, but set in the 50s, I believe, it's really shocking because things like electroconvulsive therapy, it really just fried people's brains and made them into shells of their former selves. If you had mental illness, it was really a struggle because the treatments that people would give you a lot of times didn't work. It's really heartbreaking. I think another sad thing is that I was reading this book knowing that Sylvia Plath did eventually succeed in taking her own life after multiple suicide attempts. This is a very raw and honest depiction of mental illness and I think it is such a shame that in our society even today mental illness is so stigmatized. I think we definitely need to have more frank and open conversations about mental health because it's really important and it's just as important to get treatment for mental illness as for any illness, other illness that you might have because mental illness is real. It's not something people make up and we need to support people with mental illness and encourage them to get help, not judge them for it. Now, the next book that I want to talk about, I did read when I was a freshman, so more than four years ago. I apologize if I don't remember all the details right or if I butcher these pronunciations. I am not from Afghanistan, I'm sorry. But this book that I really enjoyed was The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. The Kite Runner follows Amir, who is growing up in Kabul around the time of the rise of the Taliban. He is friends with Hassan, a boy whose father works for Amir's father, and together they compete in these kite flying competitions where Amir will fly the kite and then Hassan will run to catch it when it falls, hence why it's called the Kite Runner. Now, one day, Mir witnesses something horrible happen to Hassan. However, he doesn't do anything to stop it. And after that, he is overcome by guilt about how he allowed this awful thing to happen. And it is ultimately really a story about guilt, redemption, friendship, and family relationships, especially father-son relationships. At the beginning of the book, Amir as a character is really lacking in courage. He is a coward who isn't willing to stand up for others, but after his complacency in what happens to Hassan, you see him grow up and struggle with what he's done. He really wants to make amends and try to become a better person. And I remember thinking that his character journey was very interesting. I really emotionally connected with these characters and this book made me emotional several times. It was also interesting to learn about Afghanistan because when I was 14, I knew absolutely nothing about Afghanistan. I sort of knew who the Taliban were, but not really. And I think this book was really interesting, a window into these characters' lives. I definitely think I want to reread it now because I think when I was 14, I may not have been mature enough to fully comprehend everything that was going on. 
And this book does have sexual assault, more than one instance of sexual assault, including the sexual assault of a male on another male. And I remember a lot of kids in my class really didn't understand that rape isn't about sex. It's about exerting power over someone else. A lot of them thought that the male character who was sexually assaulting another man was doing that because he was homosexual. But that's really not the point. The point is that when you when you rape someone, you are dominating them, you are exerting complete control over them. It is a power move. It's not about sex. So I definitely think that this was not the best thing to give to 14 year olds because a lot of kids in my class do not understand really the nuances of the plot. And this is something that I would like to reread because I don't remember everything about it. And I think I might enjoy it more and understand what it's trying to do more now that I'm older and I have a more nuanced understanding. A another book that I read in school that I really want to reread is one that I had to read in eighth grade and that is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. To Kill a Mockingbird was actually recently voted America's most beloved novel of all time in uh, the PBS Great American Read special. And this is one that I do want to read again because it was really weird. When we were reading this in eighth grade, our teacher told us not to read certain sections of the novel because she said they would confuse us, which I really don't understand. I mean, I don't think it was her attempt to shield us from more mature elements of the novel because we spent a lot of time talking about rape and racism when we read this. So I don't think that was it. I just don't really understand why they would have had a bunch of 13 and 14 year olds read this book if they thought that we wouldn't understand it. So that kind of confuses me. And I would like to read the whole book through now that I'm an adult. I don't currently own a copy though, so I would have to go get one. To Kill a Mockingbird is told by a young girl named Scout who is living in Alabama in the 1930s. Her father is an attorney named Atticus Finch and he decides that he is going to represent in trial a local black man named Tom Robinson who is accused of raping a white woman. And Atticus does not believe that Tom is actually guilty. He thinks that he is being falsely accused. However, because Tom Robinson is black, it is really hard for him to get a fair trial because this is Alabama in the 1930s and it's racist and it's really dealing with the reality of racism and showing it from this child's perspective because children aren't born with hate in their hearts. Children love everyone and treat everyone the same and hate is something they're taught. So it's always really hard when a child has to confront the realities that the world isn't fair, that the world is racist, the world is sexist, the world is homophobic. It's really heartbreaking. And this book is just so emotional and so good. I really remember liking it, but it was so long ago. And like I said, our teacher had us skip parts of the book. I don't I don't know why. So now I really want to go back and read the entire thing through because I don't understand why it was taught to us that way. But it was. I don't I don't know why. I also could not do this video with giving a little shout out to my two favorite books of all time. I didn't really want to talk too much about them in this video because I talk about how much I love these books all the time. So if you follow, if you're subscribed to my channel, like you know my feelings about these books. That is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which is my all time favorite book. And I read it the first time sophomore year of high school where I selected it for a project that I had to do. And the other is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, another one of my favorite books, which was required reading for our class in junior year of high school. I love both these books. They are both absolutely phenomenal. Some of my all-time favorites. I don't really need to go into it because I've talked about my love for them many a times. You guys know how I feel about these books by now.
So guys, those are my favorite books and plays that I had to read in middle school and high school. Let me know, what were your favorite books that were required reading in school? Come back to my channel next Monday if you wanna see my video on my least favorite books that I had to read in middle school and high school. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more from me. I post new videos every Monday and if you wanna follow me on Tumblr or be my friend on Goodreads, those links are down below. Thank you so much for watching watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, and I hope to see you in the next video.